So in today's session, we talk about the introduction of food acts. It is not only introduction, we could say it is the overview, total overview of the food act. Apart from that, also the food authority. We'll take a just snapshot look about what will be the going on with consent to the food acts. Fine. Okay, when we say food laws, we could say it is one of the bookish language. When we say law, so definitely a law is anything that could be on a written manner. Or we could say it is according to the legislative act. The terminology which is used for the law should be in the, should be like law terminology. Okay. So it is the legislative act prohibiting the different types of adulteration chances. Now, when we say adulteration, so it is nothing but a simple process where we are making a combination of inferior quality of good into superior quality. That is one of the simple term or that is one of the simple thing we could say about in adulteration. Okay, in adulteration, what do we do? We are just taking about the inferior quality good. Okay or we are adding the inferior into the superior part or misbranding any types of misbranding chances could be there. So whatever things we are making into the act so that it could prohibit different types of adulteration or prohibiting any type of regulation for the any article of food. That is the food laws and they are in the written manner and the language by which they are there, they are, it is nothing but the legislative act. To implement the act, we require certain stated rules, certain written statement. And these written statement could be called as a regulations point of view. So definitely regulations means nothing but a way to implement a specific act. Fine. Now there are different types of act. Okay, as we know, there are, certain, there are certain types like FSSA 2006, Okay, so before moving ahead, let me clear one thing. When we say FSSA 2006, it could be also say that FSSA Act 2006 or FSSA 2006. It is nothing but Food Safety and Standard Act 2006. Okay. We could say rather than this heading, okay, this is nothing but the different types of laws. Rather than this, we could say it is the laws. What are the different things which are included for the laws purpose? When we say FSSA Act 2006, so keep in mind, the act is there so that food is safe for the consumption. So that the food is safe for the consumption. What happened generally, food is not safe for the consumption because it contains certain hazards. Okay. Generally what happened? Food contains certain hazards. That's why it is not feasible to act in a safe mode to eat or to act in a wholesomeness. That could be harmful for the health, harmful for the food safety point of view. So now you could comment in the chat section because I think rather than a mono, monologue that will deliver by my end, if there is a participation from your end, that could be feasible one. So if I say, there are different uh, hazards are there. So according to the food authority, okay, one more point. When we say food authority, it is nothing but the food safety and standard authority of India. Okay, just remember these things. When we say food authority, it is food safety and standard authority of India. So now the question is, according to the food authority, how many types of hazards are there? You could uh, answer in the chat section. Four. Okay. Uh, I think rather than unmute yourself, if you three. write in the chat section, that could be feasible one. Okay. Yes, definitely. Cert, cert, some says three, some says four. Because what happened? Uh, it is one of the important point. As majority of us knows, yes, like Swati says, physical, chemical, biological, we all know about this. Three. We know th about this. Three, but what is the fourth one? And the fourth one is one of the, yes, definitely. Uh, Allergens. Allergens are there. Yes, that is most important points. There are four different types of yes, Gauri, perfect one. So not only three, 
keep in mind there are four different types of hazards physical that could be added intentionally or unintentionally into the product we don't need physical content of the physical hazard definitely we could say there are certain examples of the physical hazard like our simple says maybe addition of our any type of physical component into into the product not only physical component if certain sort of our stationaries that could be unintentionally added into our component into our food again that could results into the physical hazard when we say chemical definitely chemical directly includes different types of chemicals we are using for the any article of food maybe simple example certain cleaning agent certain detergents or even our lubricants that could be useful for different types of instruments they are also involved into the chemical type of hazard i think biologically you are all aware about the biological things and final the fourth one is the allergens okay just a second okay final fourth one is the allergens so what happen here according to the food safety standard authority of india it specifies eight different types of allergens how many types are there eight types of allergens maybe include different ways like our milk and milk product even some of the aquatic animals fish so there are eight different types of allergens and uh, from 2020 onwards it is compulsory or we could say mandatory to write the allergens on the packet so here i must say that you have to apply different strategy the first strategy you have to observe the things you have to observe anything which is nearby maybe the packet maybe the commodity maybe the premise where actual production could be done but here we have to observe the things when we observe then and then only we got the idea the thing could be done in that manner like when we say any type of milk product is there any type of fish product is there or even soya products so on the back side of the label on the bold and capital okay on the bold and capital it is noted that contains dash dash allergens contains word should be on the bold and capital followed by the allergens maybe the milk maybe maybe the milk product so contains milk is the allergen or we have to specify the allergens on the label from the 2020 onwards it is compulsory so currently keep in mind one strategy for uh, today that is nothing but observe the things maybe the packet maybe the premise maybe the f b o okay so this is the food safety standard authority act okay But first of all we talk about the food safety standard act 2006 <clears throat> there are certain uh, step wise sequences how the act is actually enacted in india we will see in the further details then second thing is the pft what happened before 19 before 2006 we have pfa and the pfa implemented on 1954 so from 1954 till the time of 2006 we just have one compulsory one mandatory standard that is the pfa prevention of food adulteration and keep in mind when we say prevention it means our focus should be on what when we say prevention of food adulteration so now my question to you is when we say prevention of food adulteration the focus is on what quality control that is the qc or quality assurance that is the qa when we say i once again repeat my question when we say pfa that is prevention of food adulteration so major focus perfect perfect answer it is towards the qc definitely it is towards the qc and when we say qc that is the quality yes kesho perfect one heman perfect one that is the qc means quality control okay so what happen when we control the things yes srishti perfect one when we control the things when the things are already happened vishwas one thing is keep in mind when the things are already happened then we are going to control the things okay so that is the quality control but before happening the things if our approach is the proactive one okay so when 
our approach is the proactive one that is most feasible for any organization so from that point of view our major query is on the inspection and thorough monitoring about the all different things maybe the near going inspections maybe the perfect monitoring or even we could say the perfect combination of f yes m yes that is food safety management system and please ensure these things because that is asked for number of times what is the meaning of the term food safety management system so here keep in mind three important parameters are in a combination one gap good agricultural practices second gmp good manufacturing practices and third one is the okay sorry one thing is missing here okay so here first is the gmp followed by the ghp and the third one is the haccp or even we could say g so these are the four combinations of the fsms it leads to the fsms when we say pfa it is the prevention of food adulteration so anything which is already happened we are going to control the things and my point is proactive approach is for the fssa act 2006 or to the food safety management system definitely your question is very perfect one pfa not going as a proactive approach okay fine so here uh, there are certain problems with concern to this act keep in mind the act is already there from 1954 onwards and this is act as a mandatory one okay so in 2006 we are going to change the act why because there are certain problems with concern to the pf act okay in certain slides in uh, next slides we are also discuss about the problems but just we are taking consider about the what are the different types of things which are there with concern to the our basics basis of the syllabus okay now the third one is the food authorities just again i will remind you one thing the authorities will be uh, driven in two points first is the state authority and second is the central one previously what happened only the position of fso could be held food safety officer but now central for the cfso again for the to even our food commissioner for the state that could be done by the state whatever recruitment done by our state end by the state lead organization that could be done by the state only apart from that center came into it so different types of food authorities are there okay followed by that one more important thing that is the food okay this is also going to be happen in 2020 onwards what is there fpler the food licensing and registration system previously what what happened till the time of 2012 to 2020 there is one portal okay and the portal is taking care about the our registration and licensing okay so uh, these are the different things which are useful for different types of food business operator that is the fbo and that is one of the most important specific distinction between the pfa act and the food safety standard act here the main responsibility lies towards fbo okay so the flrs is going to rectify by means of the fos codes we'll taking into consider about all these things in the next slides okay uh, apart from that there are different types of food testing laboratory food testing laboratory are again an important part because according to that we have to accredit our organization our maybe the testing laboratories simple example if we go for maybe the state license so for the state license we require particular thing of water testing documents water testing report that is the first important thing required for the state license it may or may not be required for the registration but yes definitely for the license it is definitely required i just in the beginning i said that the strategy to observe the things so definitely we have to observe anything on the label itself 
when we say registration okay again there are three important points are there for the registration by any fbo registration by any food business operator it is the registration could be classified into three different categories one is the registration second state license and third one is the central license because these are the actual things where we are going to implement at the ground floor so definitely we are able to recognize we are able to understand all these things when we say registration so for the registration purpose the fees is rupees 100 only for the year okay for the state license the fees is 2000 rupees per year and for the central license the fees is 7500 per year again there are certain parameters the parameters in terms of the quantity what quantity should be there on the per day volume of the business so according to the specific quantity of the per day or the per year again the licensing could be deferred but now again the simple points are there with consent to our license if i am talking about the food license maybe the food registration number or the food license now tell me how many digits are there in our license so that's observe the packet 14 perfect one nishita perfect one 14 digits are there very perfect one yes perfect one so keep in mind these are the small small things but during the time of examinations we don't have to bother about these things fine okay so this is our nothing but just a small scenario about our uh, laws the basis the basis for the laws now uh, okay now what happened the food safety standard act 2006 came into effect by repealing how many laws eight different laws previous to that there are number of laws now from the 2006 onwards eight laws are repealed into the fssa and these are most important ones. first one is the pfa as we know before 2006 keep in mind if there is a question before 2006 what is the mandatory act for the food or for the any commodity that is nothing but the pfa 1954 okay keep in mind rather than uh, taking consider about the whole line whole phrase if we go by the abbreviation then it is very fine like here pfa here we could say fpo fpo is the 1955 and uh, the trend is that at least at least one to two questions or on the date or on the year so please ensure these things Okay, this is one of the complicated thing because what happened when we say MFPO, so majority of us not going to click meat. M stands for meat. Here what happened? Students think that M stands for marine or even some of you may get confused about the MFPI, Ministry of Food Processing Industry. So here what happened? Three words are already same. So there is only one difference that is the it is for the industries that is the ministry and here meat and food product order again the year so please remind these things year is 1973 for the mfpo okay followed by that vpo is the there vegetable oil product order the year is 1947 okay this is one of the uncommon year so please uh, recollect these things like our pfa we know the pfa 1954 fpo 1955 these years are definitely we are going to collect in a single line in a single visit in a single observation but we require vpo 1947 we have to recollect the things again and again edible oil packaging or packaging order 1998 followed by that yes solvent extraction oil de-oiled meal and edible flour order 1967 okay now this is one mmpo okay here it is MMPO. Again, certain type of questions are very simple. I just uh, give you one of the example. Uh, for the example is that to regulate the different types of milk and milk product, we require which order or we require which act. So it is nothing but the MMPO. Like some of the questions are that much easy, but we have to just uh, recollect the things on a right manner. And finally, ECA. ECA is Essential Commodity Act that is 1955. So here I must say you that 
please remember these two years because other years are very fine we are able to recollect we are able to observe the years again and again but yes eca 1955 and vegetable oil product order 1947 please uh, ensure these things fine okay now some of the as as i say uh, 2006 is the milestone year in that fssa came into effect but there are certain different types of stepwise system by which we could grab the opportunities the first one is the prime minister council on trade and industry recommend one common legislation for different types of food authority fine and that would be came into effect on 1998 with concern to common point for the food authority followed by that 2004 where a joint parliamentary committee on pesticide residue when we say pesticide residue so it will directly reflect on the limits or we could say rather than limits it is critical limits okay and critical limits could be useful for the formulation of HACCP, hazard analysis and critical control points how to set up control points by which first of all we have to set up the critical limits for different types of hazards when we set up critical limits then we go for the further monitoring and documentation of process fine Okay, so according to the committee on uh, joint parliamentary committee on pesticide residue, it need to represent all laws in one of the single authority. Followed by that in 2005, standing committee of parliament on agriculture says that food laws should be presented in the parliament. In 2005, GOM, it means group of ministers approved and proposed one of the integrated food laws with certain modifications that could be needed and in 2005 itself the draft or the bill named as the food safety and standard bill 2005 finally the bill passed by the both houses of the parliament upper house and lower house of parliament as we know upper house is nothing but the rajya sabha and lower house is nothing but the lok sabha but again these are the important for your gk okay so the bill is passed in both upper and lower house of parliament and present Okay, and precedent signatory on politics is the date by which or on which the precedent signatory is there on the act. So here two questions are there. First question, when precedent signatory on the bill. Second thing, when the act is actually enacted into the gazette. So the act is enacted into the gazette on 24th of August, while the precedent signatory on 23rd of August. Okay, so both dates are much important. Then after the act, there are different things are there. Maybe like we could say, okay, one more thing is there. When we say the act, okay, so after the act, the implementation of the authority is there. The authority is actually came into effect. When? In 2008. So in 2008, the actual implementation of the act is needed so that we are able to make or we are able to avail the provision of the app throughout part of India. We require one of the organization and that is Food Safety and Standard Authority of India. It was there in the year, that was present from there 2008, fine. So up after that, we could say uh, food safety standard rules are there, rules are notified and finally, certain regulations that is the FSSR food safety and standard regulations <coughs> they are notified on 5th of August 2011 so these are some of the most important dates okay sorry okay yes definitely for your end fine <coughs> okay now, what are the uh, different types of distinction between the PFA 1954 and the FSSA 2006? First one, as we know the name, Prevention of Food Adulteration, that is 37th of Act from 1954. And yes, the FSSA is 34th of the 2006. Goal, as we know, when we say prevention, so here we have to just find, a, to find the adulteration. As we say, prevention of food adulteration. In adulteration, 
we are adding inferior quality in place of superior quality. Maybe the abstracting, maybe the, we could say, <coughs> incorporation of certain inferior goods or abstracting of the superior goods. Simple example, when we say milk, okay. So if we are abstracting the milk <coughs> and just one second. And adding water and uh, we could say and pouring water into the milk packet by means of the small injectable. So that is one of the adulteration thing. So here our basic goal is to find adulteration. While in food safety standard, we are talking about the food safety. Okay, focus inspection and control while here the focus is monitoring and thorough inspection or we could say thorough surveillance and close observations needed for every time. In terms of authorities, yes, PFA may be uh, different types of multiple authorities are there, which are involving, maybe the state, center, both are a different part. But yes, for the Food Safety Standard Act, there is a single authority that is nothing but the Food Safety Standard Authority of India. Workforce, it is somewhat inefficient, but for the FSSA, we have currently full-time persons, full-time engaged person may be called as the Food Safety Officer, even the CFSO, even the technical officer like this way. Responsibility. Now, this is one of the critical point when we say responsibility. So here, food inspector are the responsible person to have or to maintain. That is the goal. What is our goal? To find the adulteration. So to find the adulteration is the responsibility of the FI. That is the food inspector. Again, one more thing. When we say FI, so provision of food inspector is under PFA Act. But when we say FSO, so this provision is under Food Safety Standard Act 2006. Just one second. I think certain uh, voice could be there. Please admit yourself. I think uh, Priyanka, please admit yourself. Okay, fine. Okay, done. Okay, done. So these are some of the important points. When we say responsibility point of view, we almost require responsibility from the food inspector point of view because food inspector is the person who is responsible to maintain or to find out the adulteration under our PFA Act 1954. But according to the Food Safety Standard Act, we have CFSO, FSOT are the different official persons, different official authorities. Okay, improvement notice, we could not, there is not a provision of uh, improvement notice under PFA, but yes, provision is made under FSSA 2006. Penalty, direct prosecution could not be done, but yes, we have the special adjudicating officer who is there appointed as the chairperson of the tribunal. So tribunal is a type of code for our FSSA 2006. Okay, again, some of the important uh, differences. Okay, court appeal, yes, no appeal before moving to the court, but according to the Food Safety Act, Food Safety Tribunal provision is made. Okay, I will just ensure one thing. So when we say tribunal, okay, so tribunal is mentioned under just, okay under section number 70 of the Food Safety of Standard Act, tribunal is there, fine. Okay. GMP, GMP or GHP is mandatory according to Schedule 4 of the Food Safety of Standard Act. So please ensure these things, Schedule 4 of the Food Safety Standard Act, it's typically driven with consent to the GMP and GHP, how to maintain good manufacturing practices, how to maintain good hygienic practices to the food business operator. And this is not mandatory under PFA. Import control, yes, definitely improper control of import for the PFA while it is the proper control and the structure is defined one. So defined structure is there in the Food Safety Act. Sampling, okay, so this is one of the second most important thing. And uh, <clears throat> believe me, this question is already there in number of examinations, starting from the, not only from the FSO, but also for the food commissioner. 
how many samples taken by the PFA? There are three samples. And for the PFSS Act 2006, the sample could be collected by the food safety officer. And how many samples are there? He collected four number of samples. Okay. Okay, one more thing. If I'm asking about the appointment of food inspector. Okay, the appointment of food inspector is done by whom? PFA or food safety standard, FSSA. You could comment in chat section. The appointment, once again, I will repeat the question. The appointment of food inspector done by PFA or FSSA. Yes, perfect one. Tanuja, Rushikesh, Sai, perfect one. So answer is nothing but the PFA. Look, these are not uh, very critical questions, but we have to ensure these questions right now. That is most, most important. Fine. Okay, personally in sampling, definitely here the engaged persons are the food inspector. And the food inspector send the sample to the public analyst. So the terminology of the public analyst is useful in the prevention of food adulteration act. Sample means if, okay. Uh, okay, Nikhil, perfect one. Perfect question. Uh, when we say, actually at last I taken the four concepts, but yes, we have the time. Okay. When we say FSO, it is nothing but the food safety officer. So he has the power to collect the sample when there is any type of contravention to the act. Agar aapne act ko pe illegal se use kiya hai, so that is nothing but the contravention. You are doing some of the illegal things which are against the act. Definitely there are certain types of offense you made. Offense is nothing but any type of illegal things against the act. So if you made, if you means what? Any type of food business operator. He may be the manufacturer, he may be the wholesaler or the person who may be involved in the packaging, repackaging or any activities. He could be the any person who engaged into the food activity, maybe the handling, distribution, import, export, anything. This person known as the food business operator. So if your FSO think that there is any type of contravention made to our act, that is the FSSA act, then he could take samples. Okay, now the thing is that from where to take the sample. Now answer to my question. If FSO think there is any contravention to the act, he's going to take the sample. Now the question is from which place he will take the sample? Because the name of the place is very uh, precise one. Yes, Sanya, Yabbio is the person. Manufacturing place, okay. No, the question is what? Food processing unit. Okay, Kirtan, Badia. Okay, you could, you are saying that food processing unit. I'm talking about what is the place from where our FSO go and collect the sample. The particular name is there. Anything. It could be the restaurant. Okay, I will just give a hint. It could be the restaurant. It could be the organization. It could be the hotel, motel, anything. Even the market shop, anything. So it is the power of FSO to collect the sample from anything. What is the meaning of the term? Anything. Yes, Gauri, you are just nearing to the word. Distribution end. No, they are going to collect the sample. No issue from the distribution end. Premise. Perfect, Kirtana. The answer is the premise. Perfect one. The answer is the premise. So it is any place where a food could be handled, could be manufactured, could be stored, could be distributed or even move for the import or export. All the things could be possible by means of this premise. So here, the FSO go and take the sample from the particular premise when there is any contribution to that. Okay, so this is the power and for which he has to collect the samples. So under the PFA, there are, he will collect, he, he has the power to collect the three samples while it has uh, included or the provision is made under the FSSA. 
that there should be four sample collected by the FSO. Okay, four samples are there. We will also take into detail which are the four, but in the next sessions. Okay, so continue personal in sampling, yes, definitely. When we say the engaged person are the food inspectors, so it is the F, yes, uh, sorry, it is the PFA Act. Keep in mind, uh, food inspector is the person who is collecting the sample. The sample are sent to the public analyst. Like this is the sequence. Now what happened under the FSSA? We are uh, renamed a food inspector as the food safety officer. And the person who engaged for the analysis is the food analyst. Okay, so this is the sequence. Okay, and finally food recall procedure. Yes, we have the food recall procedure under the FSSA Act. But under PFA 1954, there is no any separate provision for the food recall procedure. Now, when we say recall, when we say food recall, what is the exact meaning of the term food recall? In the word food recall, what is, what the, what, uh, what is the thing you observe? We have to recall the uh, food. We have to recall any article of food from where? Or the again, the question could be simplified in that manner when we say food recall procedure. So the food is already in the market or food is not in the market. Yes, definitely. Okay, one food is already in the market. Uh, even we could say food is already uh, present in the marketing phase. Food is already distributed among the all your BOs. Maybe the distributor, even retailer, or even small shop owners. So food is already marketed one, okay? So here keep in mind the terminology because all terminologies which are written in the Food Safety Standard Act, they are from the law point of view, okay? So that's why we have to remain, uh, we have to uh, recollect the terminology. Just one second, one question is there. Okay. Yes, definitely. Okay. Huh? So can food inspector can collect the sample? Yes, definitely from manufacturing unit, he can collect the sample, no issue. So keep in mind, the, fo the food which is already marketed, the food which is already marketed, we have to recall that food which is already marketed. Yes, the answer could be that it is in the market, but the, according to the law, according to the terminology of the law, food is already marketed. It means it is already distributed. If I am a YBO, I'm already distributed my food to the different types of detail, uh, retailer to the wholesaler. So that's why it is in the market. Fine. I think, uh... okay, done. I think someone is on the mute say, yes, definitely it is on the market. Yes, the case happened for the Maggie or for the Nestle, definitely that is one of the Renowned case, we could say that, fine. So this food recall procedure, there is not no any provision under the PFA, but yes, provision for the food recall is according to the Food Safety Standard Act. That, yes, definitely, the answer could be there. Okay, okay. Now we are talking about food safety compliance system, fine. So when we say food safety compliance system, so it is nothing but first course. Food safety compliance system. What happened previous to that, there is a FLRS, food licensing and registration system. So in 2020, Pan India module got, uh, we could say uh, integrated into the first course. It means food safety compliance system. So from the year 2012, the FSSS online licensing platform, which is previously known as food licensing and registration system, is the essence of the licensing ecosystem with Pan India. I think uh, someone is on the. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. So. This is on the Pan India model. So Pan India model got the integrated in the first course. That is the food safety compliance system. So what happened here? Under the coverage of the first course or under the coverage of the FLRS, 17 lakh licenses or registration issued 
till date or 35 lakh licenses or we could say registered actively transacting on it in june 2020 the fssi is launching its cloud based upgraded new model with concern to the food safety compliance online platform so it is one of the integrated online platform with certain modifications because there are certain problems with concern to flrs okay so what are the problems first one it is one of the outdated system second less technical support is provided for the flrs then followed by that do not cope with the new changes new modifications if any type of new advancement is there then it is not going to cope in that manner and finally it creates obstruction for further improvement maybe the improvement expansion or even innovation in the licensing system so keep in mind if someone ask you for registration or license purpose you have to enroll on which system and when the two options are there first one is the flrs and second one is the foscos so what could be the what could be your answer definitely prithi the answer is the foscos currently we have to uh, just do one simple exercise <clears throat> just check on the uh, website that registration food licensing just check on the google food licensing then you will directly reverted towards the foscos fssi.foscos.gov so that is one of the way exercise we have to observe the things foscos is definitely one of the integrated platform not only integrated it is socially active by means of the it touch is yes, definitely there is a information technology touch which is is a, which is a way to driven to the or to the cope with the different types of modern changes modern innovations modifications so with the help of uh, modern updates we are able to do the things by uh, by the foscos okay again one point is there okay so the basic aim of the foscos it is conceptualized to provide one point solution for all engagement of the food business operator okay one more thing is there two important points are there one is the fbo that is the food business operator and that is the second is the fso food safety officer again the chances are that at least one to two questions on the year or on the date followed by that one to two questions on on the abbreviations point of view okay so every abbrevi abbreviations maybe the like our flrs even the fosco so even surprisingly this fso is one of the abbreviation that misspelled or we could say the mark is not going to be counted for the students because that is important here what happen one question carry four marks if it is right but if it is wrong 25% you are you are losing at least one marks that is 0.25 okay so the first course the main aim it's conceptualized to provide one point solution one point stop for all fbo engagements with the department for any regulatory compliance transactions so here when we say compliance okay again one more thing it means we are making provisions so that all activities all provisions could be made all things could be made enacted or in engaging with the particular system we are targeting to integrate the system with the holistic approach that could be done by the compliance that could be done by the foscos again it has uh, it has been integrated with foscoris okay it is food safety compliance through regular inspection and sampling so here what happen inspection and sampling are the most important things regular inspection and sampling these are again most important things by means of the fosco so we have to integrate the fosco with the fosco is regular inspection and sampling now tell me who is going to do the regular inspection and sampling for the organization point of view i am talking about who is going to take a regular inspection and sampling for the organization point of view yes priti i am talking about organization for the self okay i am talking about manufacturer point of view. yes perfect uh, ritikesh uh, yes nilesh it could be the internal auditor that could be again the answer but yes third party is uh, one of the answer 
but when we say for the organ for the manufacturing end so it is the fbo then fbo could appoint fbo could appoint internal auditor third party auditor that is one of the way fine but here fbo is the most important and from the authority point of view from the food authority point of view it is food safety officer definitely from the authority it is food safety officer while for the manufacturing point of view it is is definitely uh, i just say that sindhi i just say that a uh, fbo is up, the power is towards the power lies towards the fbo to appoint maybe the qc in charge maybe the production in charge like this is the system fine okay a single regulatory platform will enable pan india integrated response system to any food fraud to any food fraud and ensure an advanced risk based data driven regulatory approach for the start licensing registration inspection and even annual return models these are advisable from the foscos point of view now uh, when we say license okay again there is one of the registration okay so now tell me if you are a local uh, manufacturer maybe the petty food operators and your annual turnover is less than okay less than 12 lakh rupees if you are a uh, if you are a local uh, manufacturer or you may be the petty food operator and your annual turnover is less than 12 lakh i am talking about less than 12 lakh then during that condition which type of registration you need it which type of compliance you make maybe the license or the registration that is the question okay uh okay here i i uh, i must say this is one of the complicated questions because some of you say that it is the registration while some of you say that the um, license or even the state license so keep in mind when we say less than 12 lakh per year so we are going just for the registration purpose yes priti perfect one this is most important when we make the mistakes we have to uh, rectify the mistakes definitely below 12 lakh is the permissible limit according to that kalyan it is not license it is the registration when we are talking about less than 12 lakh okay so there are two ways one is the registration that is less than 12 lakh in terms of license again i just uh, communicated in one of the slides state license is there followed by that center license is there fine state license again the limit is provided okay could anybody tell me what is the limit what is the provided limit for the state license in terms of rupees or in terms of value state license ke liye exactly kitna amount permitted hota hai that is my question वन करोड़ ओके ओके सो डू द एक्सरसाइज मोर देन ट्वेल्व लैक परफेक्ट वन ट्वेंटी करोड़ डेफिनेटली टिल ट्वेंटी करोड़ वी कुड से ट्वेल्व लैक टू ट्वेंटी करोड़ एंड मोर देन ट्वेंटी मूव टूवर्ड्स द सेंटर लाइसेंस ओके वन मोर पॉइंट इज देयर यस डेफिनेटली ट्वेल्व लैक टू ट्वेंटी करोड़ याद थी परफेक्ट वन 12 lakh to 20 crore is the important thing or is the we could say specified even limits for the state license so always keep in reminder the state license limit aapko yahi dhyan mein rakhna hai why because if you know the state license limit you are very easy crack about the your first one that is the general registration and the second one that is the state uh, we could say center license so the state license limit is nothing but 12 lakh to 20 crore below 12 lakh it is just registration no 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 it is for year nikhil it is not for month it is for year fine it is for year because when we talk about the petty food operators maybe the pani puri wala or even uh, some of the persons who are uh, just new to the market so 12 lakh per annum turnover that could be counted as a registration then what happen uh, generally people apply for the the local manufacturer apply for the registration then he go for the state license and if he want to go more states or he want to involve into the activities of import export then he go for the center license or if 
the turnover is more than 20 crores. So these are the specifiable things. What happened in food laws? We have stated things. Why food laws is important? Because there are no general things. All things are specifiable things. All things are, when we say specified, it means all things are stated ones. All things are stated means all things are written manner. So we have to apply these stated things into our daily routine, into our observational level, so that it is very easy to understand the concept. Fine. Okay. Okay, one more question. When we say license versus registration, fine. When we say license versus registration, so tell me. Uh, okay, before that, anybody or anyone of you uh, is the FBO? Anybody of you uh, is working as a FBO or maybe the manufacturer of the small retail outlet? Because the question is depending on that. Or well, just one thing. As we know, there are 14 digits in our license or even in our registration number. So my question to you, your first digit for the registration starting by starting from which digit? First digit of registration starting from which digit? One or two? And the same for the license, maybe the state or license, uh, that's pretty perfect one. So the when we say Registration, it could be two. And when we say license, it could be one. Okay. One for license. Yes, Sanket, perfect one. One for license, while two for the uh, registration. Because what happened? Generally, we think that as the number is small, the business could be small. When we say one, generally, we think that it is for the registration. But the thing is that it is reverse condition. Okay. Fine. Okay. Now we're talking about the food testing laboratories. Fine. So any laboratory could be specified as a food testing laboratory with achieving three set of points. So any food laboratory could be achieved as an accredited laboratory. It requires specified accreditation. Okay. So food laboratory means any food laboratory or institute or organization possess the following three set of parameters. First, established by center, state, or any other agency. Second, it should be accredited by NABL. Okay, NABL is nothing but National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratories or any equivalent accreditation agency as like NABL. So you must have the accreditation and last but not the least, recognized by the Food Authority under section number 43 of the Food Safety and Standard 2006. Okay, okay, just... Uh, Okay, uh, one more thing, uh, Priti, uh, Foscore is, is again a, a online platform. So in Foscore, we are integrated Foscore is as an IT platform because it is one of the integrated way by which the app is, uh, even we could say Foscore is a, like an app because by, with the help of that, okay, I will explain here itself, okay. Foscore is, is a, like an app. With the help of that, here I specify one thing, Okay, it is important for FBO. It is very much important for the FBO to rectify or to correct the mistakes. Even the mistakes for the inspection, mistakes for the sampling, and that could be done by the app itself. That's why it is important. Okay, I will give uh, uh, one of the simple example. Uh, from 1st November 2021 onwards, one thing is compulsory that you have to mention the where it is okay license or registration number for any fbo for any outlet it is it is mandatory from 1st november 2021 to mention the license or registration number on what on your cash memo on the bill payment on the check or everything Okay, so it is mandatory to have, definitely, to mention the registration number and license, both. 
may be the registration number for less than 12 lakh or if your turnover is more than 12 lakh it is mandatory to have the license number we have to specify now the reason to specify okay so with the help of that we could monitor the thing on the basis of just bill itself okay on the basis of bill itself we are able to monitor the thing we are taking a thorough watch that the thing or the uh, any type of fraud is there any type of chances are there any type of problem is there then we have to sort out the problem by the number itself there is one uh, app in the fssi website itself food connect app you have to just click the license there all details are shown there again it could be helpful to make a track now there is the your assured, uh, answer to the question is for tracking it is important that's why it is important for the yabbo to track about regular inspection and sampling about the food product that's why it is important for the tracking purpose fine okay for the accreditation as we know there are three important things are there these are specified one okay just uh, one second Yes. Okay. Okay. The another question is. Well, keep in mind for e-commerce, it could be depend upon you, because generally what happen e-commerce uh, companies or the organizations involved in that, they are actually easily manageable the twelve lakh uh, per annum. target that's why they have to apply in the state license fine or even they are present in more destinations maybe two or three countries then they will go for the central license okay uh, the third point is that in our parameters that is the recognized by the food authority under section number 43 that is again important the section number 43 is typically for the accreditation of different types of laboratory okay the so section number 43 is nothing but recognition and accreditation of laboratories even some of the research institutions and referral food laboratories so that's why it is important so when we possess all the three different types of things so definitely according to that we could say food testing laboratories could be done could be accredited right okay so we could categorize the different uh, just a second there is this okay so we could categorize all the different types of laboratories in six or we could say in five to six manners these are different things first one is the national food laboratories presently there are two one national food laboratory gaziabad nfl and the center second one is the national or central food laboratory kolkata primary food laboratory is the basic aim behind the primary when we say primary food laboratory so they are specifically designed for analysis purpose as we say primary aim is to make the analysis of the samples and samples again one more thing when we say samples so just a second when we say samples so sample could be collected by the manufacturer so sample could be collected from fbo fine so uh, important thing for the primary food laboratory to carrying out the analysis for sample for the with concern to referral food laboratories the main purpose when we say referral so it means what if suppose the if suppose a uh, fso food safety officer collected a sample from any business operator okay and the verdict is that the final decision is that the sample is found default sample is again making contravention to the act now the terminology it means sample act ke khilaf hai like that is the referral one now what happen fbo is dissatisfied with the final result 
then he could move to the another laboratory and the another laboratory is nothing but the referral food laboratory so here the main purpose is to carry out analysis of the appealed samples appealed samples means what nothing but the samples or the results of the samples uh, we could say the our food operator is not satisfied with the result of sample that's why he could make an appeal the person who making the appeal is the appealant fine so definitely uh, then such type of sample where there is any type of uh, discomfort among the fso among the fbo these type of samples could be driven could be moved to the referral food laboratory followed by that national reference laboratories they are uh, spread across the whole country <clears throat> then state or public food laboratories h uh, we could say in every state there are specified state food laboratories are there currently there are 72 in number <clears throat> and finally certain other laboratories there are certain specified bodies are there we could say not only bodies or certain types of organizations are there they have own laboratories maybe our export inspection council or even the apeda even the bis so they are, they have their own specified laboratories okay so this is again one of the way so these are the six parameters by which we are able to uh, make the comparison about the all different types of food laboratories okay here uh, again the term is there that is the uh, food safety actually what happened the food safety is nothing but how food is okay what's up uh, then reference food laboratory will have x just a second what is the question Huh. Uh, referral food laboratory will they have different batch sample yes definitely yes definitely for the same reason our fso collects how many number of samples now the question is to you our fso collects how many number of samples four perfect four. that's why that's why our fso collects four number of samples one is driven to the maybe the designated officer one is required when he is producing to the court another one is already sent to our uh, we, could, we could say analyst food analyst okay what is said to the food analyst one is required to uh, present at court two are actually sent to the designated officer and out of which one could be sent to the referral laboratory if fbo is not satisfied with the verdict with the final decision of the court okay perfect question i must say that this question is one of the most perfect question and what happen when we ask the questions then our uh, basic things could be cleared one fine okay okay food safety as we know when we say food safety so whatever intended use for us by which food is safe for the consumption so the term food safety is defined as food will not cause any type of harm to the consumer when it is prepared or it is eaten according to its intended use we are intentionally using the commodity for maybe the uh, food preparation food processing or even for the personal consumption point of view so both things we require that, that does not cause any harm to the individual any harm to the consumer fine so that is the way to maintain the food safety again there are certain types of food supply systems food supply chain is there it could be started from the raw material point of view and the main aim of the food supply chain is nothing but to move or to integrate the food we could say from farm to fork from farm that is from the procured raw material to fork that is for the we could say for our serving purpose or for the eating purpose or even for the table purpose fine so the raw materials are there then what just one second one question is there okay consumer yeah, definitely yes uh, we could say raw material the raw material moved for, to the different types of food processing and manufacturing why because it is the way by which your raw material could be converted into the finished good it could be converted into finished good by means of the processing fine 
So our raw material got converted into the finished food for the manufacturing purpose. Then uh, apart, uh, after that, we require packaging so that our product could be attractive. It could fetch the eye appeal of the consumer. Then we move towards the next phase that is the transportation logistic. So that product is moved from one destination to the other destination. And that is again feasible, that is again required from the consumer point of view. Then it could move to the market, even to the from the distributor point of view, from the wholesaler to retailer. The product is moved by means of the transportation and logistic phase. Again, keep in mind, when we say logistic, it is nothing but a support system for tracking. Definitely, it is important to support system as a tracking point of view, that is a needy word. It is important for the perfect retail marketing. Fine. Market and retail, finally, it moved to the consumer. So it moved from raw material till the time of consumer. Raw material followed by the food processing and our processing. And finally, packaging, transportation, logistic to make a perfect tracking, marketing and retailing to reach to the every individual. And finally, it moved to the consumer. So this is the one of the way, one of the system, one of the cycle. Okay, some of the factors which could move our product from farm to folk. So there are six important uh, parameters are there. In the first one, changing food patterns. As we know, currently, okay, as we know, currently different, uh, we are moved from the different phases. Previously, traditional food items are much more in demand, but nowadays, rather than traditional, modern food items much more in demand maybe the different types of processed food commodity maybe the milk commodities maybe the fish egg so these things are in much demand even we are uh, changing the terminology from cheap product we are moving from low cost product to the high cost product because these products are the high cost product so this is nothing but the changing food pattern we are moving from the cereals or even in the simple sense, we could say we are moving from cereals to the different types of processed product, different types of fruits, which are previously a uh, commodity which we fetch the high value because, okay, as we know, value is nothing but benefit against cost. So definitely we are moving from the traditional cereals to the milk product, to the egg product, to the different types of fruit product or different types of high uh, value products. Second thing, the farm. As we know, the farm, farm is nothing but a way by which different types of resource could be procured. And these resource collectively known as the raw material. Yes, the resource is nothing but the raw material. Then food processing. As we know, the food processing is important by which we are able to convert. We are able to convert the raw material into the finished good. So it is one of the activity, it is one of the physical transformation of your raw material to the finished good. So the processing is nothing but the food processing. So here we are able to handle the commodity, we are uh, able to process the commodity, we are able to transport the commodity in the next phase. So this is nothing but the physical operations to convert the commodity into the one phase into the another phase. Followed by that next one is the transport and storage. Yes, as we know, after the food processing, we are going for the transportation. And if it is needed, certain types of warehouses could be constructed for the storage purpose. Then we move to the food and consumer. And even after sales service is needed, we are able to provide the same. Food and consumer with concern to how to maintain the food safety for the consumer point of view. And finally, the sixth point is eating outside the home. That is nothing but one of the, uh, we could say, modern fashions. So these are some of the factors which make their way with consent to farm to folk model. Fine. Okay. So these are the four concepts that are the most important. What happened when we say FSO? These are nothing but the food safety officer. FSO is nothing but the food safety officer. And it is one of the most important person who has the power to implement the act. Which act? Our Food Safety Standard Act 2006. So we have to maintain the, we have to implement the act by means of the FSO, Food Safety Officer. 
and here uh, we could say he is appointed under section number 37. FSO. Fine. Now, YBO. YBO is any person, any entity, any organization, anything who is actually involved himself in the manufacturing, distribution, retailing, or wholesaling, or even import or export of the commodity. Even distribution, maybe the retail, maybe the wholesale. So he is the person is the FPO. And that is one of the most important uh, segregation or the separation from the PFA to the food safety standard. In PFA, no responsibility lies towards the FBO. But in our food safety standard, the main responsibility is towards the FBO. Now, how the thing could be happen? Let's take a simple example. If any packet is there, Okay, the packet is moved from the factory to the, we could say, the main distributor. Okay, then to our uh, wholesaler, then to the retailer. I'm taking a simple example and then to the consumer. Fine. Okay, so this is what we could say, this is the chain. Okay, so here the responsibility lies to the everybody. Responsibility lies to the everyone because all are they act as a FBO. All of them act as a FBO. All of them act as a food business operator. So if anybody selling the product after the expiry date, maybe the wholesaler. So now the, it is the responsibility of wholesaler to check about the expiry date of every product or the any product. Previously, what happened? It is the duty. Of, it is the duty of food inspector to actually uh, check for the adulteration. But now, for the from the Food Safety Standard Act 2006 point of view, the main responsibility lies to the all food business operator. And if he's making any type of offense. That if it's selling any commodity which is ex, which is expired one, or maybe the packet is torn one, okay. So against the offense, a type of punishment is provided. So that is one of the important ways we have to follow with consent to FBO. FBO means nothing but our food business operator. So every time ensure these things. Now the main responsibility lies, main responsibility with consent to any article of food lies towards FBO. Okay. Now my simple question to you is, when we talk about the food safety, okay. So to the, to ensure the food safety is the role of whom? To ensure the food safety is the role of whom? Okay, as Rahul says, I have uh, deliberately not given you the options. Okay, why only FBO? Yes, with a perfect one. FSO is also there, but the answer is not that. These, it is the FBO, it is the FSO, even the authority. Yes, it, the authority is also responsible. Here we are talking about everyone. Yes, Krishna, perfect one. So to have the food safety to maintain the food safety is the responsibility of every individual. Maybe from the individual point of view, maybe from the manufacturing point of view as like FBO or authority point of view as like FSO. So it is the responsibility of every individual to maintain the food safety. And believe me, these are these questions or we could say these simple questions would be also asked in the examinations. Okay, just one second. One question is there. What is the question? How can it be a consumer? Okay, consumer my means of, uh, we could say any type of problem is there. So consumer could make the complaint. <laughs> Fine. Or if any type of uh, like certain uh, R &D, with by means of certain R&D center, certain uh, products could be manufactured and uh, it is appealed to the customer that they have to make the feedback about the products. What are the good things? What is the bad thing about the product? 
So these things could be uh, revealed to the company point of view, to the R&D point of view. Because if the things could not be revealed to the organization, then R&D could not make their way. R&D could not make the, we could say different maintain food safety, shared responsibility of all. Definitely we have to maintain the food safety is the responsibility of every individual. Fine. Starting from the handler to the different types of persons who are engaged in the food business. Fine. Okay. Uh, I think this question is already carried by us. QC, quality control and QA, quality assurance. So we have to assure the things. That is one of the proactive approach. Now, one more thing. That is the SOP. What happened? SOP is nothing but our. Okay, anyone of you who tell me the SOP? Yes, perfect, Gauri. It is standard operating system. Not system, it is standard operating procedure. Yes, uh, sure, perfect. But SOP is standard operating procedure. What happened? Uh, as we say, yes, Shravan, yes, perfect. One. As we say, accreditation is needed for the different types of food testing laboratories okay accreditation is needed for different types of food testing laboratory now how to make the accreditation with the help of accreditation we could make the standards even standard could specify the limits standards could specify the limits and it could be done by the sop given by Food Safety and Standard Authority of India. So a specific SOP is needed the, by which food testing laboratory or it is needed for every uh, organization by which different standards could be implemented within a specified limits. Because every standard we have to specify in certain limits, maybe the max, maybe the minimum, but we have to specify limits. And these certain set of limits required for the laboratory purpose and that could be given by the food authority itself. Okay, I think one more question, just a second. Okay, done, done. Okay, so these are the important terms. <coughs> the FSO is nothing but the food safety officer. MBO, uh, as we know, food business operator, person who are engaged in the manufacturing, wholesaler, retailer, even import or export purpose, controlled so for the basic aim of our food safety standard act is to have the assurance, to make the inspection, to have the thorough monitoring. Okay. Just we recall the things. Uh, just we take the revision, whatever we covered in today's session. Okay, fine. Uh, so from here we started. I think the definitions are not needed from that point of view. So the first important point is nothing but the FSS Act 2006. Okay, yes, definitely it is important to have the food safety. Okay, Safia says SOP. Okay, yes, definitely I will give you the SOP at the, uh, at the last of the presentation. Okay, uh, as we know previously there was only one mandatory act before 2006. Okay, so the mandatory act before 2006 was Prevention of Food Adulteration 1954. But the problem lies towards the PFA is it is known as the prevention. So we are just going to control the things after they are already happened. So we have to make our approach in a proactive way. So for that purpose, we require food authorities, maybe the state authorities, maybe the central authorities. Our FSO, maybe the commissioner, they are lies toward the state one. While central food safety officer for the typical region, again, keep in mind, one question is very common. CFSO appointed at a place where more central license are issued. Why it is so? Now you, are, you could uh, answer the thing because here the turnover is at least rupees 20 crore or more. Okay, agar itani lagat hai, to hi hum kaha jayenge? CFSO ke paas. So that's why a CFSO is required in the particular destinations, particular location. Maybe the locations like Mumbai, maybe the locations like Mahua, even some of the important locations where import, export of the community could be done in a much more manner, much more matter like this way. Then FLRS, uh, we could say for the licensing and registration purpose, there are three ways, three bases for the fees. 
for the registration 100 rupees fees is there it is for year okay for the state license 2000 fees is there for the central license 7500 per year fine yes uh, when we say uh, food safety we have to make our food safe from different types of hazards generally the hazards are four physical chemical bi biological and allergens as there are eight allergens specified by the food safety authority and we have to mention the allergens at the back of our label in the capital and bold fine okay so these are the eight act which are repealed into the food safety standard act 2006 which are these pfa 1954 fpo 1955 annual return to be filled by the fbo okay sanket one more uh, one point is there what is your point just this is a full question okay uh, for that different initiatives could be there you are talking about how to take care about the annual return okay could he could be done by means of the different types of uh, official authority like maybe the chartered accountant or even fs the FSSAI has certain initiatives. In one initiatives, it could be FSM, Food Safety Mitra. Food Safety Mitra provide you different set of benefits for the food business operator. Maybe for the licensing purpose, for the registration purpose. Even if suppose your registration got uh, expired, then renewal of that uh, particular license, renewal of particular registration, that could be done by the Food Safety Mitra. Even certain hygiene rating is needed that could be even driven by the FSM. Even your annual returns are also done or also given by the FSM, food safety mitra. But uh, I think you must know one thing, FSM food safety mitra is already available. The link is already available on the FSSI website. But yes, at the later stage of the registration, you have to uh, provide the specific type of training. So here FSM is a person could be Yes, definitely, as Priti says, Digital Mitra, Trainer Mitra, and Hygiene Mitra. These are the three uh, set of uh, segments under the Food Safety Mitra. Fine. And these are needed for the Food Safety Mitra. Already, uh, one important point is there. If uh, you look for any type of, uh, we could say, uh, facility provider, facility provider with concern to FSM, if we just click on your uh, search button in the FSM section and if you just click on the particular district by which you belong when you enter the space you got what are the registered FSM and you got their contact details with the contact address so that is one of the very uh, great thing uh, driven very, very great initiatives done by the FSSAI aapko ek hi click mein wahan pe exactly location ka hai kya hai wahan ka or exactly your address be kahe, puri mil by the FSM food safety mitra itself. Okay, so these are the eight things in which you have to mention. You have to uh, ensure the laws for two, the years for the two laws. VPO means vegetable oil product order 1947, and ECA means essential commodity act 1955. Okay, so these are the milestones from 1998 to the 2011. So certain important dates. 12th, 23rd August 2006 is for the bill by which or on which President's signatory got on 23rd August 2006. 24th August, it is gazetted. Okay. 2008, authority is came into effect, then followed by that rules and regulations are notified on 5th August 2011. Okay. So these are some of the important differences. Keep in mind two differences. Responsibility lies to PFA while here to the FBO, responsibility lies toward the FBO under Food Safety Standard Act. Sampling, we have to collect the three samples. When we have to collect the samples? First thing, uh, who collect the sample? FSO, Food Safety Officer. In PFA, the person who engaged in collecting the sample is known as the Food Inspector. And he's collecting three number of samples and send them to the analyst that is public analyst and when he has to collect the samples when there is any type of contravention to the act if you do certain any type of illegal things maybe the adulteration misbranding misleading things anything you uh, done by your end then during that time a food inspector collect the samples 
person engaged for sample collection is the food safety officer and yes food recall procedure is not uh, made or there is no provision for food recall procedure for the pfe okay there is a flrs is previously system from 2012 to 2020 there are certain problems now it is modified as the first course okay food safety compliance system <coughs> it is important for tracking purpose food testing laboratories three important set of targets are there may be established by central state or any authorized organization accredited by nabl or equivalent one and notified by the 43rd section of food safety standard Act. section number 43 taking care about the accreditation of food testing laboratory these are the six parameters of food testing laboratories where a referral could be used for the appealed sample in the sample the FBO is not satisfied with the result given by the authority then food safety definitely we have to maintain the food safety from farm to fork so that the food could not cause any type of harm to the consumer so it require like certain steps raw material to food processing manufacturing followed by packaging transportation marketing and finally consumer so these are the six factor which could affect or make their impact on the farm to fork model changing food patterns from traditional to modern to convert or to have the procurement of raw material food processing conversion of physical uh, con physical conversion transport and storage followed by food and consumer and finally outside home eating and these are the four important concepts we just take into account okay okay uh one question is there previously i think the question is related to the F sop standard operating procedure like when we say sop so sop are created for any specific purpose just one second okay any specific purpose maybe i just mentioned that different types of SOP for critical limits or even for the residues, maybe pesticide residues or maybe how to handle the any type of commodity, SOPs are maintained, even the accreditation followed by the, okay, uh, Nilesh, uh, that could be one of the very good reason of GHP and GH, GMP, but I think that could be done by the, our codex, uh, when we say about the codex, what happened? Our food safety is actually defined by codex. Codex is one of the international parameters by which we could maintain the food safety and it requires two perfect combination. GHP taking care about the good hygienic practices and GMP for the manufacturing practices when we handle the commodity in a hygienic matter. That's why codex is important. Fine. Both things are important from the uh, food safety point of view. GHP means good hygienic practices followed by gmp good manufacturing practices as a okay when we say about the sop standard operating procedure so different things are required for the standard operating procedure maybe for the accreditation followed by that how often you run the particular instrument particular uh you could say machines then how to handle the communities it again requires sops fine okay i think uh, Okay, one question. Okay, that could be done. Okay, uh, so we stop here. Shall okay, definitely it's uh, time up. We stop here. And uh, if you have any query, you could uh, write in the comment section, or you could uh, just pass to the coordinator. They will approach me, and I will definitely uh, go with the questions. Fine okay so i think it's time to say goodbye stay tuned for our next session thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you, thank you sir thank you sir thanks sir thank you sir thank you sir